Welcome to this spring edition of Cash Rendezvous. I'm Jill Hodson. And I'm Tamara Bradley. If you were out driving on the highway near Tremont yesterday, you might have noticed this accident. On I-15, yesterday at about 4.30 afternoon, a strong wind pushed this associated food storage truck and trailer to the left, tipping it over onto the side of the road and smashing the cab on a guardrail. The same wind also caused this UPS semi to drift where it ended up in a ditch about 500 yards down the road. Police were on scene and towing crews pulled the UPS semi on the road first. Eventually, the second semi was pulled upright as well. Police stopped traffic for several hours on this part of the freeway. Southbound I-15, about mile post 378. Uh, it's what we call locally as big curve, as you can see. South winds stronger than usual. The trailers were both empty on both semis and uh, the wind blew them over. The drivers were taken to the Bear River and McKay D hospitals. Martin said that one of the drivers was suffering some injuries to his abdomen. Salt Lake City hosted their second ever Comic Con and people packed the Salt Palace Convention Center to see their favorite celebrities. Hey. Celebrities such as Nathan Fillion, Adam Baldwin and the captain of the Enterprise, Patrick Stewart, held panels so fans could have a chance at asking questions. People lined up outside the rooms for hours to be able to get front row seats to the, in the panels. But many of the fans said it was just worth to be able to listen to their favorite actors. After being asked if he gave great hugs, Adam Baldwin was nice enough to invite the fan on stage so he could find out for himself. In the end, over 100,000 people went to the fan experience over the weekend, putting the Salt Lake City Comic Con as the third largest Comic Con in the nation. When you live on campus, it means you have to buy a meal plan, which means you have to eat at the same places every day. But some students find themselves favoring one place over the other. Every day, more students eat at the marketplace than any other food option on campus. And there's definitely a variety of food, from pizza to smoothies to treats. But who do students choose to buffet over here, over the junctions? Especially when both places are similar, with a pasta bar and sandwich station in each. The marketplace and the junction both have sandwich bars, but I don't really see the difference in between them because they're both the same. I prefer the marketplace over the junction just because there's more options, I think. I think we have more variety than they do. It's free, paid for my, by my parents, so I like it. I come all the way just for this food. So it doesn't really matter where you live on campus, it's more of just a preference. Every student who lives on campus is required to buy at least 10 meals a week, unless you're lucky enough to have a kitchen in your dorm. You might be hearing some racket about now. That's Jill over here. She looks like she's doing a tap dance. Jill, that's pretty impressive. What are you doing over here? I'm clogging. Clogging. I thought yeah. it was tapping. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, there is a difference, but it's, you know, it's pretty similar. I went to the studio to find out what makes clogging so different. Clogging is a style of dance that started in America. I'd never heard of clogging until I came to the States. I know that it started like in the Appalachia Mountains. It was kind of like a folk dance of America. And um, then they gradually added the taps to their shoes. And so it's just a very American dance. Tap shoes have one tap on the toe and the heel of the shoe. Clogging shoes have two taps on the toe and the heel, making the sound louder. It's not just what's on your feet, it's how you move them. Clogging can get confused with tap, but these two styles of dance... They are very different, but at the same time they have very similar traits in terms of being able to be very musical, obviously, with your feet. Those traits characterize tap and clogging and help define what each dance style does. Clogging is very up and down movement on the balls of your feet. There's a lot of heel sounds with it. Tap, it, tap is more controlled, upper body very controlled. Though clogging and tap are similar, the main difference is that clogging shoes have a fuller sound than tap shoes. While at the studio, I found out that clogging used to be a kind of forbidden dance. People would go to the woods to perform. Coming up after the break, Everyone knows a bad haircut can haunt you for a long time. We'll show you a place where you don't have to be afraid anymore. And out with the old, in with the new. We'll show you how one taco is better than the other.
Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Hey everybody! Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. Cause every kid across the nation deserves a book to read. And we can make it happen right now. No, I don't know what you've been told. But kids with books learn so much more. So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child. <laughs> <laughs> Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back. I'm here right now with Misty Inglet, who, rumor has it, you tried a pickup line this morning. I did, yeah. <laughs> tried is the key word, though. It wasn't like a total fail, but it definitely but was kind a of. success. Yeah. Let's just take a look and see how that went. <laughs> so, uh, I noticed your lips looked a little lonely. Would they like to meet mine? <laughs> oh my gosh. What is your name? Misty. Misty. I'm yeah. Sorry. Nice to meet you. Well, you know, they're not lonely because I have a girlfriend. So as you can see, it didn't really work all that well. Yeah, he was a little weirded out. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I went around campus to see how effective pickup lines really are, and what I found out is they don't really work for anyone. So. Hey, that's a nice watch and a nice shirt. Come to think of it, everything looks good on you. When a guy comes up to you and says a line, it never works. You're never actually like, oh my gosh, that I'm totally going to go out with him now. Do you guys own Campbell's Soup because you're mm -mm good? They're funny, but I don't think they work. If you were a Transformer, you'd be Optimus Prime. If they're intentionally funny, they work. Do you live in a cornfield? Because I'm stalking you. Did you eat Lucky Charms this morning because you look magically delicious? I can't be your baby's daddy, but I can be your daddy baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. 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 Good. Hey, uh, I was actually just on my way outside to make out. You uh, want to join me? They were great, especially for people that don't know how to talk to girls. Because then it's like, you can look stupid, but it's an excuse to look stupid. I think it depends on the situation and it depends on the girl. My heart just got transplanted into my bicep and it only beats for you. <laughs> Is your name Virtue? Because you're garnishing my thoughts unceasingly. Is your dad a terrorist? Because you're the bomb. Hey girl, are you Google? Because you're everything I'm searching for. So Amanda, do you like my hand better on this shoulder or this shoulder? I usually would just rather have someone introduce themselves to me. So you can see it didn't really work. People just yeah. don't appreciate pickup lines at no, all. No, I feel like they're more of a joke. I don't think anyone really uses yeah, them. Yeah, more like an icebreaker than anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Well, it looked kind of fun out there, anyhow. Yeah, you so. can try one if you want. See what results you get. But. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> Thanks, Misty. You can't get Mexican food from Blue Square at any hour of the night anymore. But some at this new restaurant, some USU students are being attracted to the new location. This Mexican restaurant took the place of Roberto's in Blue Square's food court. The food court is also home to Subway and Orange Leaf frozen yogurt. But El Toro Loco is now the only place here to get your Mexican food fixed. The people I work with are really friendly and it's a pretty chill job. Previous restaurant closed because the management was very lazy and the hours were very inconsistent. My boss is really friendly and he takes into consideration what hours I need to be working and stuff like that. And the menu items are cheap too. El Toro Loco made more in the first four hours of operation than the old place made in a day. You've probably seen someone pull a rabbit out of a hat or other magic tricks like that. 
And they're usually done in a performance, but one man is taking this kind of magic to the classroom. The special ed third and fourth graders at Thomas Edison Elementary School took a break from reading, geography, and other typical subjects to welcome a visitor to their class last week. Kevin Spencer is an illusionist who teaches kids of all learning levels in his Hocus Focus workshops. The children at Thomas Edison were able to interact with Spencer and even learn some magic tricks they could do on their own. I think it was a great opportunity for them to have something special that was just for them. You know, they, I think there are times when they just need something extra to make them feel important and special and this was a chance to do that. The kids at the Thomas Edison School weren't the only ones who got to see Spencer in his act. He also visited a couple of other local schools while he was in Cache Valley. We have Jason Borba here with us today. Jason, your hair's looking mighty fine. It's looking a little long. It is looking a little long. <laughs> I'm actually going to get it cut on Saturday. I'm going to the Sears Shack and my barber Gino was actually nice enough to let me into his barber shop and we can, so we can hear the sights and sounds for you guys. I've kind of just always cut hair for fun. People have to take a double take when they see it. Cutting my own hair for so long, I kind of had an affinity for barbering. Oh, I can totally do this. So the more I kept doing it, the more and more motivated I got. He can cut anything and he can make it look good no matter what. He's pretty versatile. I haven't been able to find anyone that's been able to cut my hair in the pictures that I show, except for Gino. I haven't deviated from him since. You create a niche and you create you know, demand and people just got to get into you because word of mouth is just going crazy. You got you know, really differently textured hair, so they're like, we recommend, you know, Gino at the Shear Shack. The most favorite aspect of cutting hair is the people. Tell you what he was doing? Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I see all walks of life, you know, it kind of gets the humility factor higher and higher up. You just don't know who you're going to meet, what story you're going to hear. Interesting guy, but he can play the, play the heck out of the guitar. You're making it happen, you know? Where's my boy at? Like, he's getting scooped. Like, oh no, it's something different. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> the barbershop feel, you, you just come, you drop your guard down. Um, even from a, a female standpoint, there's no drama in a barbershop. It's a very good environment. He's very nice and very good to work with. There's no weird tension. There's no awkward silence. We're always joking and laughing. He's a real hometown barber feel. It's a really comfortable atmosphere. We're just old school vibe. I think people really are able to come in here and just chill. Gino also does like crazy stuff like hair tattoos which is where he like shaves some part of your head and like does a crazy design. So I think you two should definitely do it. Okay, I actually thought of shaving this head. Yeah, it'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Could I, I pull it off? I think so. I think I you think definitely can. do it. Can do it. We're doing we it also, today. We can get like lines in our head or something. That'd be really sweet. Okay. I don't know. Okay, Good it's idea. a deal. Like a Utah State <laughs> logo. Perfect. <laughs> All right, let's toss it over to Ileana who's live to tell us more about this windy weather. I know, it really has been really windy this week, but after the break, we'll be heading on outside to give you your Cache Valley weather forecast. Every budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me trees. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit getcoveredamerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? I got rid of my car. I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No, no, no. 
But getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. We've got Ileana here with our weather forecast. As you can see here on the East Coast, there's definitely some storming going on in the north. But that's only especially in Michigan and Boston. Bringing it on down to the south, there's some patches of storms. You can see some rain, some snow, but over on the west coast, it's pretty dry because summer is definitely coming. Here in Utah, bringing it on over to the state, in the middle of the state is where the north and the south collide because the north is definitely storming while the south is dry and summery. Here in the north, right above Salt Lake City, there's definitely going to be some rain and some snow, but here in Logan in particular, you're just going to be seeing some rain on Saturday. However, if you've noticed, it's been a little humid. There's definitely some water in the air. That's probably why your hair has been frizzing out just a little bit too much. All right, and over to your seven day forecast. We have here on Wednesday, our high is 51, which sounds pretty hot, maybe if it was winter time, but here, when it's supposed to be summer soon, it is really cold outside, especially with this wind. The low today is 33, but tomorrow and on Friday, there's definitely gonna be a 10 degree increase up to 62 degrees. On Saturday, as I said, there's going to be some rain, so the high for that day is gonna be 47. But bringing on over to Sunday, and Monday, it's going to be between your 50s and your high 50s with your lows in the 30s. But don't you worry, next Tuesday it's going to be a high of 64, the highest we've seen all week. But your lows going to be 37, so be sure to wear a jacket. I'm Ileana Brunda, and that was your Cash Value Weather. Back to you, Tamara. Thanks, Ileana. Right now, we're going to toss it on over to Brandon, who's over at the softball field for some sports. Thanks, Tamara. Coming up, we've got softball, track and field, Volleyball gets a new home, and it takes about 360 feet for a home run. I'll tell you which baseball team didn't have the muscle. Stick around. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Got to watch out for that runner on third. That was Eric Stransky sliding in for a run against Weber State. I'm Brandon Fonda, and this is ATV Sports on your Cash Rendezvous. Now let's head back to the Diamond, where the 18th ranked club in the nation showed why they are one of the best. It all starts on the mound. Reliever Jeff Schiffman came in to pitch two innings and Weber State couldn't touch him. He faced six batters and said, hey, get back in that dugout. Four strikeouts and no hits while he was in charge. Aggie Bats helped out too. I wasn't sure if the game had started or if this was batting practice. David Clayton smacks the first of his four hits deep in the left center. USU scored five runs in the first inning. This one off a hit by Mike Woodland and fifth in the fourth as Colton Anderson slides home. And when the Aggies weren't getting hits off the bat, well, 
They were getting hits without the bat. Two batters hit by pitch in this rivalry game. Garrett Schiffman walks it off though like a champ. Manager Norm Doyle said that that didn't ruin the fun though. The bats were hot all game. Well, last night we came out and we clinched the conference championship so the guys were really loose today. And they were just going out there having some fun and swinging the bat, being aggressive, uh, running the bases aggressively, and uh, got a lot of hits and a lot of runs. The Aggies went on to win 12-2 and swept their three-game series with Weaver State. Their next game is Saturday at 4 versus Boise State. All right, on to softball. Here we go. The Utah State softball team returned home to take on the Boise State Broncos for a doubleheader. In the first game, it was close until Boise State scored four runs in one inning as the Broncos went on to win 5-1. to one. In the second game, the Aggies started off strong, scoring five runs in the first inning. Victoria Salcedo hammered this pitch over the fence for a home run, and later in the inning, Noel Johnson was nearly tagged out at third base, but was safe to give her a triple and bring in two runners. Boise State wasn't going down though without a fight, getting two runs in the second and third innings, trailing the Aggies five to six heading into the bottom of the third inning. The Aggies had two outs and two runners on base before the game was put on hold for lightning in the area. And after a 30 minute delay, coaches and umpires decided to delay the game until this afternoon. The Aggies went on to lose both games. They're away this weekend, but they do return home May 2nd for their final home series of the season. Off to track and field, they jumped, they ran, they threw stuff at the Mark Faldmo Invitational on Friday and Saturday. It was the first and only home track field meet for the Aggies this season. Let's start with the women. Alex Litzinger took first place and recorded a personal best four minutes and 37 seconds in the women's 1500 meter race. That's just under a mile for those who struggle with the metric system. Okay, I actually had to look that up, so don't, too, don't feel too bad. The, in the women's triple jump, it was Sam Nielsen who reigned supreme with a personal best of 12.39 meters. Hope she didn't get any sand in her eye, though. That's a lot of sand. In the men's 1500, Utah State's Colby Wilson ran away with it with a personal best of 3 minutes and 55 seconds. Kenneth Hamlet was leaps and bounds ahead of the competition, posting a full meter longer than anyone else in the triple jump at 14.27 meters. They work hard, they have talent, uh, as, you know, as, as you saw, uh, and, and they want to, you know, they want to be here, and, and that's, a, that's a great combination. It was a successful weekend for the Aggies as they went on to win 11 events. The Utah State volleyball team was able to enter their new Wayne Estes Center for the first time and take a tour of the building that they will call home. <laughs> it's huge! That was the team's first reaction to seeing Kirby Court for the first time. This is where the team will play all future home volleyball matches. During the tour, the team was able to look at the locker room, where the weight room will be, as well as the team room where they will watch video and draw up plays. While the team was able to walk through the building for the first time on Monday, it is not fully completed as there is minor touch-ups that need to be finished. Oh, Ben, I just like couldn't help but smile. I mean, I still like can't help but smile just because it's so like amazing and better than I could have ever imagined. Probably the gym was my favorite just because that's where we'll like be playing and the whole atmosphere. Mm, I'd have to say like 50 billion. <laughs> It's just a cool experience to be a part of. Being able to have your own facility, um, I don't know how many volleyball programs have something like this, and we're going to be able to sell that to recruits really easily. The building will be completed by the start of the volleyball season in the fall. It will also be practice court for both the men's and women's basketball teams. All right, not only do you now, now know how far a home run is and how many meters is almost a mile, but you are caught up on Aggie Sports. Back to you, Jill and Tamara. Thanks, Brandon. When we come back, Utah State has some trees that might be older than your grandpa. But a new generation of seedlings is ready to take their place. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, 
You, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell him. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Did you know you can do all of this for free? Aggie Blue Bikes, USC's bike rental and repair shop, lends out commuter bikes for three month durations, or racing, mountain, day cruisers, tandem bikes, and unicycles for the day for free. If you already have a bike, come in and our trained technicians will help you repair, tune up, or overhaul your bike. Again, for free. Aggie Blue Bikes, located between the Field House and Military Science Building. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Welcome back. We're here with our David Matthew Stewart, who's here to talk about the trees on campus with us. Hey, David. Hey, that's right. So yesterday was uh, Earth Day, and today, well, Friday's Arbor Day. So just thought I'd throw it out there. If you're living in Cache Valley right now, you're within 10 minutes of one of the coolest, most extensive collections of trees in the state. Utah State University takes their trees very seriously, and with good reason. Aside from providing food for local wildlife, they make perfect study companions. Their tumbling leaves are nature's confetti, and their fallen branches create super fun obstacles to dodge on your way home from class. Most of us are only able to fit four or five trees in our yard. The collection of trees on campus, however, is significantly more impressive. On a campus, we actually have really a botanical garden here, uh, kind of an arboretum, uh, where you can come look at all the different kinds of species of trees that do well here in Utah. There are over 230 different species of tree on the Utah State University campus. Among them, 25 state champions like this one, trees that measure wider or taller than any other tree of its kind in the state. Darnell says that the mature trees around campus, and especially those on the quad, contribute to making our campus such a special place. He and his team intend to maintain that atmosphere for future generations. Most of the Norway maples that you see that ring the quad, they've reached uh, kind of their top maturity. So in 2010, a group of people got together here at the institution, created a tree master plan for the quad. Take a stroll around the quad to see the very first stages of that plan. The committee has planted almost 80 London plane trees along the inner ring of the quad, with the hope that they will grow and take over as the mature Norway maples complete their life cycle. It took over 80 years for the quad to look how it does today, but those in charge hope the new, longer-lived breed will minimize the loss of character that often comes as older trees fade away. It's probably not going to look like a lot of people remember it uh, probably from the 80s or 90s uh, dur during this long transition, but we have begun the process. If you want to know more about a, tree, a specific tree on campus, hop over to our Facebook page. I'll throw a link up to the USU's tree inventory. It's kind of cool. Thanks, David. Thank you for joining us on our last show of the semester. We're going to send you off with a little beatboxing. We'll see you next fall. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 